Welcome to today's video where I'm going to be sharing with you some of the best objects to observe with the Celestron Astromaster 114. So if you are considering buying this telescope or perhaps you've recently just bought it and are wondering what is in store for you, then this video is for you. Now, I do want to begin by mentioning what this telescope is designed for and where its capabilities lie. Firstly, it is considered, and this is reflective in the price, it is considered an entry level telescope first and foremost. So it is typically best for those who are new to astronomy or are on a budget, or perhaps both as well. It has a 4.48 inch aperture and it is a Newtonian reflector telescope that is operated via a German equatorial mount. Now this is really, really important because this is how you essentially use it. So you will need to perform polar alignment and it does require manual tracking and fine tuning to identify and track celestial objects in the sky, okay? Its highest useful magnification is 269 times with the provided Barlow lens. So I've got that in there. You also get two eyepieces, so I've got the 20 millimeter eyepiece in there at the moment, and that's an image erecting eyepiece as well, so your image appears the right way round and not upside down. And you also get a 10 millimeter eyepiece, which, I've, uh, which I haven't got inserted at the moment. That comes in that case too. Both of these allow you to observe slightly differently. So um, this one obviously allows you to have a higher field of view, the 20 millimeter that is, which is why I've got it in um, now. So I can basically ob observe, identify a target, and then essentially when I've kind of locked in on it, I can move to the 10 millimeter for that higher magnification. Now here is what is most important to remember. This telescope was designed primarily for observing the planets and the moon. This is where the telescope's true power lies, okay? Many deep sky objects will be difficult to see due to the limitations of the optics along with the tripod and mount system. Those that you will be able to see, so the deep sky objects that you will be able to see, will be the brightest, okay? Remember that. So I did just want to quickly mention all of this up front because it's important that we set our expectations up front. So with that said, now let me delve through my favorite objects to observe with this telescope. The first, and it has to be, is the moon. You get some really, really impressive detailed views of the moon, particularly the craters and just the lunar landscape in general. You can also observe the moon at different phases and it allows you to kind of observe, um, you know, different elements of the moon. And it's, it's honestly, it's just, it is the best thing to observe. This telescope absolutely excels for the moon. Number two is Jupiter, its cloud lines, the moons, and also the big red spot. Three, Saturn, along with its rings, which under the right conditions appear really, really crisp. They are my top three that I would recommend and are best to observe with this telescope. From there, you can observe other planets, Mars, Mercury, Venus, Neptune, and Uranus. You can see all of them through the telescope, but do bear in mind that they will appear as small dots through the eyepiece. They're not going to be, you're not going to get those crisp views that you get uh, with the Moon or Jupiter or Saturn for that matter. Now other things you can observe um, at number five, bright nebula. So the Orion Nebula, the Lagoon Nebula in Sagaritis and the Ring Nebula in Lyra are some of the best to observe. In terms of galaxies, my favourite is without doubt the Andromeda Galaxy. So that was in at number six. At number seven, beautiful double stars. Dina Bola in Leo and Alberio in Cygnus are some of the best that I like to, to observe. And also brighter clusters in at number eight. Perseus double cluster, the Pleiades and the Hercules globular cluster are some of the best. Now one other thing that you can use this telescope for, which may 
or may not be kind of why you bought it, is it's actually really good for land usage as well. So whether you want to observe planes in the sky, you know, during the day, whether you want to observe boats in the distance, or even birds, depending on where you are, it can actually be really good for that too. So lastly, they're my favourite things to observe and what this telescope is capable of. Lastly, I just want to give you some tips for getting the most out of your observations with this telescope. First, it is, I do recommend adjusting the magnification for different objects. So the built-in corrector lens acts as a two times Barlow lens, magnifying uh, what you see by two times. Now this is great for planets, but not ideal for wide views like star clusters uh, and even galaxies. So for fainter objects like nebulas, it can limit the light gathering. So my solution and recommendation for that is to use a 0.5 times focal reducer and that will reduce magnification and just make them observations easier and better for, for that matter. If you have the budget I do recommend two extra things. The first is that you upgrade the eyepieces. Now these are absolutely fantastic and great for kind of um, first time usage and, and kind of getting used to the telescope but in time if you can uh, invest in some plossal eyepieces that will go a long way as well as some um, uh, some light filters as well that will really kind of enhance your viewing uh, experiences um, now bear in mind obviously one of the benefits of the telescope is its price so you may may or may not want to have that kind of additional investment but I would recommend it if you can um, when it comes to um, looking at say gas gases on Jupiter you will need filters for that and I would actually recommend talking of filters is that you also get a moon filter that will enable you to see more of the moon at different times you know it can be really really bright it can kind of hurt your eyes a little bit so if you get a moon filter it will just make your whole kind of moon observation much more enjoyable um, the other thing I'd recommend is and this is what I've personally done I switched uh, to using Solarium instead of the included Starry Night software for planning my viewing sessions the interface is more user friendly and it just has a really good extensive star catalogue and I think as particularly its mobile version and I think that's really really important if you're using a telescope like this particularly one on a German equatorial mount. So that's the Celestron AstroMaster 114 and what you can see it is first and foremost a telescope for the planets particularly uh, the moon and like sorry <laughs> it is a telescope particularly for observing the moon and then also planets with the best being Jupiter and Saturn. The others you can absolutely see, but you won't be able to see them in the detail that I've uh, of the previously mentioned planets. So I hope this video is useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. With that said, all of the best. If you do get this telescope, let me know what you're able to see, and I hope you have an excellent day.